That is a response video to um, Darwin's hamster um, on the subject of the Fed. And uh, yeah, I did see that video, you know, the three hour one, um, a couple weeks ago. I watched it. And, uh, you know, it's nice history. It sort of explains some of this fractional reserve banking, I think it's called. Um, but the problem is that number one doesn't offer a realistic solution. I don't know if it was the same video, but at the end, I think they talk about um, going back to a. S I don't think that maybe this was a s well. One video said, "Yeah, we go back to a gold standard." The other one said, "We don't go back to a gold standard, but then we um, retire all the debt." And their their explanation for why it wouldn't be a catastrophe is that um, you know the capital that exists like when people are giving back their money on the bonds then that money becomes investment capital again and theoretically it's already been used that's the problem with this whole economic system is that the same money is basically financing you know multiple collateral it's collateral for multiple loans so there's this huge amount of debt out there but a lot of this debt is held by debt you know which is kind of funny i mean the the collateral for the the debt is debt. So on both ends, you know, both ends of the system, on the borrowing system's end, on the lending end, they are, you know, lending money they don't have. And on the borrowing end, people are borrowing money they haven't, they're collateralizing with debt that, you know, with debt, which is, you know, isn't gonna work in the long run. So anyway, um, yeah, well my, you know, look, I'd rather they didn't have this private institution thing. I'd rather it be a little bit more um, open in terms of some kind of accountability and I think they could do that at least give it like a three year you know after three years or whatever they make the records of who got what banks got how much money how much lending they did um, I don't know what they got available now I mean it gets all really complicated so, I mean the average citizen is going to be able to follow all this money but like the video just doesn't point out is it doesn't show us <clears throat> well you know Joe Rockefeller or whoever, um, you know, uh, secured $50 million last year through this, you know, interest he was paid by being one of the member banks or some other, you know what I'm saying? There's no money trail here, no real evidence that a huge amount of money is being pulled out of the national economy into some private hands. Um, and then on the other, conversely, we sort of have this evidence that um, it does control interest rates, does keep, they have been pretty low for a pretty long time, and considering how much debt the country has, that's almost miraculous. Um, but in a sense, that's sort of the real problem here, because, you know, we have this mountain of, of debt, and we haven't really had to pay for it, because we basically financed it in this tricky way. And so we've kept it from impacting in terms of, you know, creating inflation as it should be doing. Um, and so instead we've been, you know, paying interest on it. We've been getting away with that. But as soon as you really hit a hard time, it's going to be a really hard time. Because if this debt ever, this mountain of debt ever crashes, um, who's going to pay it? I mean, and then most of this debt is basically the country's debt is is income tax debt it's not um i mean we've been taking more money social security taxpayers have actually been paying in advance into a system just so rich people could essentially borrow the money and uh you know invest it in the stock market make a profit that's higher than you know what they would get otherwise um on basically money that somebody else had to pay in advance so they're not only losing interest on the capital you know they're losing the working ability to have the capital this is taken out of their pocket in advance they're basically paying for a uh, a trust fund that you know like i said it's just a, a fund that the rich get to play with because they're not paying their full share of the taxes because that's where all the debt is being uh, accumulated is through a, a, a deficit in income tax revenues so <clears throat> you know it's basically the, the the rich are exploiting the system currently in my opinion um, and uh, like I said, I don't, I don't have any love for the Fed, so I don't want to be misconstrued, but I just, <clears throat> you know, they are elected officials in the sense they're appointed by elected officials. There is, you know, both the Senate and the Congress have oversight authority. Um, you know, we the people really can take a little bit more control over it if we wish to. 
um, and I don't know whether abolishing it is the right way to go necessarily because in some sense there needs to be a damper you know some sort of cushion between um, debt and inflation I mean it sort of makes sense if like I said you know even though I don't I, I'm, the war is appalling disgrace if we had some circumstance where we actually had to borrow money the federal government um, it would be good if we could keep that borrowing from immediately devaluating the currency you know to protect the currency from being destroyed because that's the real question here so you, you could go to a direct system and just say okay we can't borrow money anymore but you know that's going to have an impact because then taxes are going to have to be raised so that's going to be a, <clears throat> a little bit crushing on economic growth because that's sort of what debt has been used for over these last <clears throat> especially the last two decades it's just been this way of, of artificially stimulating the economy so you could pretend the economy is doing better than it actually is because you just create you know funny money that you play with and you know everything seems great uh, but eventually somebody has to pay that back and so then you have to have a contraction in the economy to pay that money back and so if we go to some system that is more accountable or more direct um, like I said, I always thought from the very beginning it would have been better if they had that. I mean, I wouldn't go for a standard, a gold standard or anything else, because I don't think there's any point in, in securing away some valuable commodity in some reservoir somewhere. That's just stupid, because you just make the, like, you know, if we made a gold standard or something, then we just knock gold back up to $1,000 an ounce. <clears throat> and it has industrial uses and the rest of it, and would just be inflationary just from our fact that we're storing it, let alone the fact that we're storing a big, giant ton of money that we're intending not to use, which is really dumb. I mean, it should be in the economy, the resource. Um, so, but I mean, if we go to just a practical standard where, yeah, we tell our currency is worth this much and we're not gonna create artificial currency, you know? And so the only time you can destroy currency is, is you know, either destroy it or, or you print it, but I mean, it's, it has to be, uh, um, um, you, know, you have to have the, the, the revenues to do either one of those things. You either collect more taxes to destroy currency um, and uh, to produce more, you either collect more taxes to, you know, put more into the economy or more spending. And, uh, but I'm just saying, now we have this mountain of debt, and so now the question is, is how, do we, how do we even move to a different system <clears throat> with that big wall of crap hanging over our heads. I mean, it's it's really hard for me to, you know, come up with a, a, a way that you can transition even when you have that much debt to get rid of or to clean up. Um, because if you don't continue to pay interest on it, if you just declare, okay, we're going to print the money, pay off the debt, well then, yeah, you're going to, you know, you're going to cut the value of the currency into like one-tenth, <laughs> you know, and who does that going to hurt the most we you know that's the part that's the part of the question i don't i don't have an answer for <clears throat> is let's say if we had 90 percent inflation who would that wipe out i mean would it wipe out the regular working stiff you know guy or would it you know nail the rich who are the people that really need to be nailed because they're the ones that basically created all this debt in the first place because they didn't want to pay their income taxes you know because they're rich and they think they deserve to be rich and you know that's a whole nother ethical question is is you know you have to make somebody has to make their own judgment I mean I, have, I see no excuse for billionaires I really don't don't see any excuse for it there's no reason to have them <clears throat> in the 70s we had a whatever it was a 90 percent tax bracket you know and it just to me that was perfectly sensible because there's a point where you have enough goddamn money and you really don't need any more um, and well, anyway there's this whole you know money is just chasing money I mean it's this in this system and it's just the, the only the, the the real focus should be is on money that actually produces and that if you really look at what's produced I mean they're you know most of these capitalists aren't you know Henry Ford I mean they're not innovating with some kind of you know brilliant new idea they're just innovating with oh yeah we'll get Michael Jordan to sell our stuff and we'll pay him for a 20-year contract and blah blah you know it's just some marketing gimmick they're not making production more efficient um, and you know then the internet's a perfect example because that could have really straightened the line between production and consumption but all the, the companies have sold out to the idea that 
um, they don't do their own marketing anymore, you know what I mean? So basically they have distributors for their products, they let the distributors basically sell their product, you know, do the marketing, do the, the, the huckstering, and, uh, and so the consumer has to buy it from the distributor, can't buy it directly, and so it's, the, the consumer is stuck paying that marketing tax. Um, basically, because it's going, always going to have to pay the overhead of some middleman who's marketing the product rather than going directly to the source, directly to the assembly line and saying, yes, give me that, you know, with no Michael Jordan tax, no bullshit tax, no marketing tax, no $500,000 to figure out what color to paint it tax, none of the other bullshit that goes with most consumer products. Okay, well, anyway, off subject.